Probably they're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. Diddy has always been quite sus, especially during interviews. And it's weird that no one really paid attention to his words. Now that his secrets are out in the open, some of his old interview clips now sound pretty creepy in retrospect. A good example was when Jimmy Kimmel asked him about Will Smith and J Lo. This is love. I saw a guy on the internet the other day who said he used to be your security guard who said that when you were dating J-Lo, Will Smith and Jada tried to pick her up on a threesome and you were gonna beat up Will Smith. Is that true? <laughs> Back then, everyone believed Diddy was just playing along, or maybe he was just sincerely confused. But you can see the way his face changed as soon as Jimmy asked that question. Yo, this show has gotten crazier since the last time I was <laughs> <Yes. laughs> It's all about no, love, though. That's no, not true. You you really heard that? No. What? Yeah, yeah, I watched it uh, on, on the internet. You're yeah. telling me I can't believe everything I read? What? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, I thought we was friends. Where did this <laughs> Of course, Diddy tried to play it off like he had no idea what Jimmy was talking about. However, his former bodyguard had an entirely different story to tell. A birthday party that I think Either Matt Damien was given for Ben Affleck. It was just a little gathering. It was at the Four Seasons. Will Smith and his sister and her husband, we were all sitting on this side of the room. Matt Damien, uh, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, Puff, Will Smith, and uh, Jada, and they were sitting on the other side of the room. So I know Puff so well that he stood up. When he stood up, he walked and like, and did his own some, some kind of way like, and then he went like this, you know, like and I went over towards him. I know to go over there towards him. So I go over towards him and he said to me, he said, yo, I think Will, and Jada is trying to scoop up Jennifer. This isn't the only P. Diddy interview that's freaking everyone out now. Remember when he and 16-year-old Justin Bieber appeared on Jimmy Kimmel show back in 2011 and Justin started talking too much? Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. I haven't gotten it yet, though. Yeah. I know. <laughs> when is that coming, that Lamborghini? We talked about this last he time. He had the Lamborghini for a day or two, and he had <laughs> access to the house, and he knows better than be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. <laughs> You probably seen the video of the Lamborghini Justin was talking about here. But in case you don't know the story, Diddy got legal guardianship of Justin Bieber for 48 hours in 2009. And you can tell everything about that meeting was so shady. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time you come right. in LA. Yeah, this will be yours. So, every oh, time you come okay. in LA, it's a little dusty, but you know, come get the front shot at Man. Let that out. Minute. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we are gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you wanna do? What you wanna do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours, let's go, um, are we gonna, let's just go get some girls. Let's go hang with some girls. Man, after my heart, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. With this context in mind, it kind of makes you wonder what exactly Diddy was trying to hide by warning Justin not to talk about what they did on national TV. You can hear the conversation just die out immediately after he said that. But whatever it was that Diddy did when the cameras wasn't rolling, we hope it comes to light very soon. Speaking of coming to light, one person who has been very vocal about exposing Diddy is Wendy Williams. She's been doing it way before she became mega famous, and Diddy once got her fired from her job at Hot 97 in 98. 
So when she finally came face to face with Diddy, you can tell even the queen of tea was gagged. Including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yeah. conversation. Yeah, this yeah. Full circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you smell the got the <laughs> footage. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Now, who has this many people at their house? Puff, and, uh, or Sean, Diddy, Doody, what do I call you? <laughs> uh, like, I, I, you? I think you should call me Puff. You always call me Puff. I do. Yes. To kick off the conversation, Whitney starts by admitting how she had gotten into trouble with Diddy in the past, which made it even weirder that the two were sitting on the same couch on live television. But the juice in this interview was when Diddy mentioned that he met Wendy's son backstage. 16 year old. Mm -hmm. Who I met backstage, who's. He's, he did? He's a great, great young oh, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you represent a lot to a lot of people in general. I mean, you're an example to people who aren't black. Now, why did Wendy have to make it so obvious that she wasn't comfortable with her son meeting Diddy? But you know who else was uncomfortable around Diddy? Mike Tyson. Usually, you expect the heavyweight boxer to be the most intimidating presence in any room. But watch what happens when Diddy and Mike Tyson appeared in an interview together. I'm just, I'm into, I have so many different ventures, and I'm, I'm into the music business now. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm an artist. I have a, a, a tremendous artist named um, Javine um, Howard, and she's tremendous, and she needs a little bit more season when she gets to the top of her game. Everybody else is going to have to compete for second place and be happy with it. She's totally awesome. Hopefully, you know, people's been helping me out. Um, Wycliffe's been helping me out. Devontae Swing's been helping me out. And hopefully, Puffy helped me out, you know. <laughs> the year was 1998, and Puffy, Mike, and Heavy D had been invited to the Keenan Ivory weigh-in show. However, what started as a regular conversation between some of the biggest black stars took a dark turn when Mike did this. Why did Mike immediately remove Diddy's hands, though? Is it possible that he heard so many horrible stories about this man that he didn't even want their skins to come in contact? The bigger question is, how many of these celebrities knew about Diddy for years and never talked about it publicly? After all, before he got arrested and details of his free calls started coming to light, he already talked about it on the Conan O'Brien show back in 2002. To make just an amazing killer party, because mine, I put out the cheese whiz. I put on the Paula Anka. Wrong no move. one comes. Wrong See, move. So you're doing the wrong things. Wrong boy. thing. Okay. This is what you need to do. Um, women. Beautiful women, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, beautiful women. Beautiful men for the ladies, of course. Um, Wouldn't it be better if there weren't beautiful men there? There were just a lot of beautiful women and then just the guy? No, no, no. You have to, you have to make... There's enough ladies to go around. You have to make, the, make them, the ladies... Give the ladies what they need, too. You know, you have to take care of your women. Take care of the ladies, okay? The ladies, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. With everything we know now, take care of the ladies sounds kind of sinister, to be honest. Who could have guessed that what he meant was drugging them out of their mind and forcing them to do things against their will? Allegedly, of course. Not just one alcohol. Alcohols. Right, just Florals. different blend. You need Blends. the ladies, you need the booze. You need um, some water. <laughs> <laughs> For watering plants? No. What? no, no, I don't know if guys have noticed this. Like, a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. Right. Got to right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> okay, this Let's... is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but yeah, you know, yeah. broccoli, but just right. check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. A lot heat. of heat. Yeah. Heat. You mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol, and it also affects, like, um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Builds up a nice little sweat. That just sounds disgusting. What are you doing? Uh, depends on the way you look at it. Oh, people yeah. start getting kind of, it gets kind of sexy. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, you sexy. New word for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Hey, yo, yo. <laughs> no, no. Lock on doors, take care of girls. Everything about this interview screams red flags. But did you see Diddy and Ellen together on TV? No, not the one where she tries to scare him with a clown. Clowns. No. I heard that. Impossible. Why is it impossible? Because I'm a black man. You can be scared. I have so many other things to be fearful of. A clown is uh, not going to scare me. Really? Yes. I'm not afraid of clowns. I, but I heard that you were. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty creepy. But you know what's even more creepy? 
This clip of Ellen talking to Diddy about his parties. Your birthday party, am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. To no, well, there. <laughs> is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I have one at your house. Where's the... <laughs> <laughs> now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party. Uh-huh. <laughs> Watching clips like these now makes you wonder what Diddy really meant by that's a different kind of party. 30 to like maybe three o'clock, two, three o'clock. And then you know we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it will carry on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean um, the, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Uh so does this mean that Ellen knew about Diddy's freak off parties? Considering how she has not commented publicly about the Diddy situation, it's quite possible that she knows more than she's letting on. Speaking of secrets, watch how Diddy reacted when Charlemagne asked him about his involvement in Tupac's death. Now it was this documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we not even gonna even go there with all due respect, but I appreciate you as a journalist asking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cause you listen, seven years ago I'd have been like, yo, did you hire somebody to kill Pac? But no, you do it like a journalist. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, we wouldn't even get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's nonsense. Which we never believed, by the way. Yeah, thank you. But the new witness that just came out in the Diddy Tupac case looks like the cat might just be out of the bag sooner than we realize. However, that wasn't the only time Diddy got challenged in an interview with Charlemagne. One time he even asked Diddy to comment on 50 Cent calling him gay. And the way Puffy reacted was kind of sus, to be honest. You segueing into the Drink Champs interview <laughs> when you was with Nori and Fab and Jada and mm -hmm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were sounding real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course nah. I didn't see it. No, nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I swear to God. Oh, Come yeah. on, yeah. man. You saw hey, that on World hey, Star hey, and hey, on yo, the check, gram. Check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely... That came from Harlem, too, by Yeah, it came from Harlem. I definitely would say some, oh, my, ooh. The crowd would be like, whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games. Y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But, um, yeah. Did the you compilation? Go? Nah, I was... I was coming off of being in Miami at night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play, play, hey, yo, play listen, some. yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, when you put my bag Daddy, I like when you oh, when you're scrambling and scraping for no, 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 shit. No, no, no. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy, when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> you can see Charlemagne's face go from joking to deadpan serious. But did you also know that he once tried to get British princes William and Harry to attend his parties? When they were young bucks growing up and they were getting in a lot of trouble themselves. So hey, I was like, why don't you come hang out with me? On your kind of that you want to get uh, Prince William and Prince Harry to uh, to a ditty party. I don't think not 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 anymore. I mean, before you know. <laughs> Yeah. Don't no, ruin our royal no, no, wedding yeah, for I, us. I, I <laughs> Trust me, they're off the list. Diddy had always been known as a jealous man. And what better example of this than during his red carpet interview at the 2015 Met Gala? I wanted to ask you, I want, can't wait to see 3 a.m. Yes. The controversy. Yeah. Uh, How can we get a tape of this? Oh, I'm going to send it to you. I'm, I will email it <laughs> to email you. Email me the yes. whole thing. Yes, I love yes, it. Yes. I love that you're constantly you. crushing the glass ceiling or crushing yes, the black yes, ceiling. Yes. You're you know, one of the first. One of the first. You know, I'm, be, I'm blessed to be in this industry. And, yes. And you are blessed. I just try to blend it with my artistry. Yeah. And you create that. I, I'm thrilled. I want to see that like tomorrow, 8 p.m. <laughs> send it to me at 3 a.m. in the morning. With all these obvious red flags, it's quite strange that no one ever thought about raising an alarm about Diddy's illegal activities. Which of these interviews spooked you out the most though? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.